Today, we are asking the hard questions. Since 1990, the North Pole has been wandering towards Siberia. Scientists have puzzled over this phenomena since that time, and all sorts of explanations have been thought up to explain it, such as an impending magnetic excursion event, polar reversal, the remnants of an ancient planet, and now climate change. We're going to attempt to answer what's causing this wandering pole phenomena. Is it climate change or something else? Fair warning though, there will be some speculation. Yes, that. Thank you, computer. In this episode. Well, so once again, we're going to turn that speculation line on and keep it on, unless we get really weird. Like the fact that I almost never wear pants while filming these. I wear shorts, you pervert. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite thing about magnetism, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of The Man Without Hands, and this is Science Get. In our last video, we talked about the ancient collision of Thea, which would have deposited these continent-sized things straight into our core, as you can see clearly here in this animation. It's thought that this collision, which most likely happened 4.5 billion years ago, was the catalyst which kicked off the formation of our moon. There's a ton of information on this, and really, instead of regurgitating that information here, we're just going to paraphrase and tell you to go watch that video once you're done here. Which I guess we just did. But what does this have to do with the wandering magnetic North Pole? Well, I'm glad you asked. The South Atlantic Anomaly is a region above a part of South Africa, and part of the Atlantic Ocean where the Earth's magnetic field is dented or extremely weakened. Now, there are a few explanations for this phenomenon. One is that this is the one part of our planet where the Van Allen radiation belts come close to the surface of the Earth. And it's thought that this causes a flux of energy particles, which causes a breakdown of the magnetic field in this region, exposing our satellites that pass over the anomaly to very high levels of radiation. Another is that the anomaly is a normal part of our magnetic field's life, coming and going thanks to natural processes deep within the Earth. And another idea is that it's being caused by one of the remnant LLSVPs that we talked about in the last video, that just so happened to rest deep beneath the African continent. As explained in our video on the magnetic pole reversal that might have happened 40,000 some odd years ago, it's thought that the churning magma pockets deep in the Earth are fighting for dominance, creating two different North Poles, one near the Arctic and one that is wandering towards Siberia. The point being that the magnetic field and the activity of the poles might not necessarily be connected to the Earth's changing climate. If hypothetically, okay, I was just checking, the LLSVP beneath Africa causes the South Atlantic anomaly, then it lends a lot of credence to this idea. But on the other hand, new research suggests that we may have a much greater effect on our planet than we ever thought possible. Cue the title card. As explained earlier, the sudden change in both the location and the migration of the North Pole towards Siberia in the 1990s was quite the shock for scientists, and a new study suggests that glacial melt and climate change may be to blame. Despite what you might think, the locations of the geomagnetic poles are never fixed, even before the Great Migration towards Siberia started. That's a great title for this. Magnetic North was heading toward the western edge of Canada's Ellesmere Island, Susia Liu probably butchered that name and I'm really sorry. A hydrologist at the Institute of Geographic Sciences and Natural Resources Research in Beijing decided to look at the data pertaining to glacial melt since 1990. Liu and their colleagues checked that data against the polar drift since 1990. Since that time, glacier melting in Alaska, Greenland, and the southern Andes were seen to have accelerated. The timing of the melting of that ice, as well as the effects it would have had on Earth's mass distribution, seem to suggest that glacial melt, as well as other effects from climate change, may have helped trigger this polar drift. Liu and their team submitted their report on April 16th in Geophysical Research Letters. While their analysis does seem to indicate that there might be a connection between these two phenomena, it can't explain all of it. After all, much of what causes our planet's magnetic field happens deep within the Earth. But the idea that melting glacial ice caused a redistribution of Earth's mass is totally plausible. And in fact, new research suggests that climate change has changed the Earth's axis.
We established in the last section that melting glacial ice can cause changes to the Earth's mass distribution. Well, that same mass distribution can also cause the eccentricity of Earth's axis to increase, which, as you're probably guessing, can also shake up the Earth's inner parts. And while you might be asking yourself how a bunch of melted ice can cause such a drastic change in the location of our poles, and that's understandable, we're not just talking about a small amount of ice melting. We're talking about hundreds of billions of tons of ice that has melted every year since 1990, most of which spills into the ocean. What's more is that from 1995 to 2020, as climate change continued to ramp up, the speed at which the North Pole was wandering increased by 17 times what it had been from 1981 to 1995. The Sanshan Deng from the Institute of Geographic Sciences and Natural Resources Research at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, wow, that's a mouthful, said that the accelerated decline in water stored on land resulting from glacial melting is the main driver of the rapid polar drift after the 1990s. Okay, so that's crazy, but don't think that we're done here. Because gravity data interpreted from the GRACE satellite that was launched in 2002 has been used to link glacial melting to the movements of the North Pole in 2005 and 2012, both following increases in glacial melt. Deng's research, however, breaks a lot of new ground by extending that link to before GRACE's launch, stretching all the way back to 1990, showing just how much impact human activity has had on the poles. While glacial melt looks to be a major contributing factor in Deng's research, the pumping of groundwater and irrigation for agriculture may also be contributing to this. Groundwater is stored underground, duh. But once it's pumped up for use in our showers, drinking fountains, sinks, and <clears throat> toilets, it's usually flushed out to sea, which contributes to the redistribution of Earth's mass. In fact, over the last century, humans have pumped a massive 18 trillion tons of water from underground without resupplying those stores. It's thought that this groundwater pumping is a much bigger contribution to Earth's rising sea levels than even glacial melting. And when you think about just how many developed nations there are in the world, the bigger picture really starts to take shape. Think of us like a billion ants slowly swarming and covering the earth like a deer carcass. Or maybe an elephant carcass. On second thought, I'm, I'm not really sure there's a two-scale reference for this. In any case, while one ant won't have much of an impact on an elephant, eight billion would probably pick those bones clean. But hey, that's just my speculation. Okay, so we've established that humans have an impact on the Earth's tilt, and this could explain the strange stuff going on with our North Pole. But are there any other explanations? In our video on the magnetic excursion and pole reversal which occurred 40,000 years ago, give or take, we explained that such pole reversals led to the collapse of the magnetic field leading modern human beings to seek shelter underground and, you know, also the extinction of Neanderthals, and megafauna, and probably a bunch of other stuff that we don't know about. Now, it's been suggested that the North Pole's wandering we've observed since 1990 is the first sign of an impending magnetic pole reversal. And while excursion events where both the North and South Poles end up wandering from their typical stomping grounds are considered to be normal, not all of these types of events lead to a reversal of the poles. What's more is that the South Pole hasn't been wandering to the same degree as the North Pole, doing this weird motion you see here. Now, I'm no hydrologist or even a geologist, or even a scientist. But I do wonder if this isn't totally normal behavior during the middle of an excursion event, like so many our planet has experienced in the past. So what's really going on here? Well, here's the thing. There is a possibility that all of these scenarios are true and accurate. It's possible that Thea's moon-forming ancient impact of 4.5 billion years ago with the Proto-Earth has had long-lasting effects, leading to the formation of the South Atlantic Anomaly, as well as conflicting dynamo processes that have led to conflicting North Poles. It's also possible that man-made climate change has caused the Earth's axis to tilt, causing all sorts of unknown processes inside the Earth, as well as accelerating or causing the North Pole to wander, as well as speeding that process up. While it's also simultaneously possible that the Earth is long overdue for a pole shift, or maybe our activity is kickstarting one, early, 
Are all three of those things exactly what's happening? I don't know, but it's fun to think about, right? But one thing is definitely clear. We can't continue to ignore the impact that the human race is having on our planet. That's a fact. If you dug this content, drop me a like and comment below what you think about the studies that led to the making of this video. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get. Oh, look at those names. Thank you, everyone. Oh, look, it's done. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.